so I can't, t I don't know if I can see the recording um, icon. I will, I'll give you the indicator once it's up. Oh, well, that will explain why I can't see it. <laughs> Maybe I'm not missing anything. <laughs> okay, you're live. Excellent, thank you. Welcome everybody. Sorry for the little bit of the delayed start there, um, but uh, we're here now. So I know we've got a number of folks that are um, that are participating from uh, YouTube uh, who are tuning in, and then we've got uh, a few that have joined us here in the actual uh, Zoom uh, link. But I just want to say thank you for joining us tonight. And just as a reminder, this whole thing will be recorded um, and put online. So you'll be able to, um, to watch it afterwards if there's anything you miss or if you want to see a link again or something like that. Um, no worries. We'll, we'll definitely make this available right away um, for you to review. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you a couple of things on my shared screen as we walk through um, what the McCyber platform looks like. Um, but uh, as kind of an overview, then I'm planning to basically go through some more of those frequently asked questions uh, like I had done back at the end of July when we had that town hall meeting. And then um, with whatever remaining time, I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have, or if I don't have an answer for you, I'll take your question down and, and get you an answer. Um, and then this will be followed immediately. So uh, this is the K to five session immediately following on this same platform um, and link is going to be a 6.30 uh, session for the students in grades 6 to 12. So if you have kids in K to 5 and 6 to 12, feel free to hang out um, for the next session. Otherwise, um, when the K to 5 session portion is over, um, you're still welcome to stick around, but if you don't want to, you can leave as the a 6 to 12 one will start at 6.30. Um, and then again, if we run out of uh, time to get all the questions or whatever at the end, I'm always happy to um, set up a meeting or a phone call with you, or you're always welcome to email me or that return to school email address, and we'll be happy to answer questions for you. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll do a quick overview. I'll show you some resources um, and, and point you to some further resources that you can do as homework when you get off of here at some point. Um, there you go. We'll get school started early. Um, and then, uh, and then I'll, I'll take answer questions and then take questions. At the end. So uh, let's get rolling. Um, well, I guess for starters, I should introduce myself real quick. Uh, my name is Mr. Harachunian. I'm the, um, typically in the role of uh, middle school principal in the McGuffey School District, um, but right now I'm serving as the academic coordinator for the district uh, temporarily. And part of my responsibilities uh, in, in this current role um, are to oversee the McCyber program that we've been developing. And uh, we've really had a pretty strong response. We've got over 300 students um, currently signed up for McCyber in the district, um, which you know we're excited to be able to offer another uh, platform for families to learn. Um, but at the same time, we're also you know learning ourselves um, as this is a new program. So we're open to feedback and um, and would you know would love to hear about your experiences as you're going through the program to help us. All right, now we can get rolling. So, um, and forgive me if it, if it seems like I'm I'm uh, I'm trying to stay sort of on track with my thoughts, but I've got a lot of thoughts. And so, uh, and I've also been immersed in all this stuff for several weeks now. So if I'm using language that you're like, hey, I don't know what those words mean uh, or anything like that, um, or, or I glossed over something that you wanna ask more about, maybe just take a note and then uh, and then make sure to follow up with me to answer, answer your question there. Um, so the primary thing I think that you would need to know at this, uh, at this point is that 4K to five, like I'd mentioned in the town hall meeting, uh, we're going to be using a, uh, an organization called Lincoln Learning. And Lincoln Learning, um, or sometimes you see Lincoln Learning Solutions, they are an organization that we've partnered with actually for years uh, for some of our course offerings at the high school and the middle school, uh, mostly around foreign language. We've also had some summer school and credit recovery programs through them. Um, and they really have a pretty robust um, online learning platform. Uh, there are a number of outside charters in Pennsylvania that also use Lincoln Learning. So this is kind of a, a similar experience uh, to what you might you know, get at a PA Cyber or something like that as well. But this, this program keeps you as a McGuffey student, uh, it keeps tax dollars in our district and, um, and offers similar learning experiences. So Lincoln Learning is kind of the mother um, organization of this. And for K to five, they're gonna be using a learning platform called Buzz buzz like a bumblebee. 
And that's their um, icon over there on the right of your screen. Um, looks like a little modern bumblebee. You'll see that a lot um, as you're navigating through the different uh, learning platform that you'll be um, on. And I'll show you here in just a second. Uh, and Buzz is basically where you'll go for accessing your daily lessons, turning in homework assignments, um, things like that. Um, there are some, I put getting help when I need it on the screen because there are some uh, help options that you'll see in Buzz. Um, and then I'm going to point out some other help related things to you here uh, later on that you can, folks, you can reach out to if you're having any issues along the way. One of the things that I did note in there is that Chrome is the preferred browser for using the Buzz Learning Platform. Um, so if you are uh, using a McGuffey School District Chromebook, um, no problem. Those uh, those run on Chrome, so you'll be you'll be in uh, good shape as far as the best browser for using Buzz. But you know some families have their own laptops and things at home that they might want to use. Um, I don't know to be honest if how it works um, in terms of using Internet Explorer or Edge or Firefox or Safari or any of those browsers. Um, you may you may be able to use them just fine, but if you don't have Chrome and you're going to be using a device. Um, that's not a uh, McGuffey device, you might want to consider downloading Chrome uh, for the purposes of Buzz. Um, that's, their, that's their platform. They kind of built everything to work in. Um, and then I actually already went ahead and plugged this link in. Um, I made it a tiny URL um, to make it a little bit easier to see, but I, I, thought I, had, um, I thought I'd adjusted these letters here at the end to be capital so, they, so the underscore wouldn't cut them off, but I don't but it looks like it, it uh, I don't know if it reverted or I didn't save it or what, but um, the, there's a link to some video resources to help you navigate Buzz, uh, tinyurl.com, and it's, that's a lowercase y, 26OPPB, and that's a J at the end. Um, like I said, it looks a little bit like an I because that underscore is cutting it off, but that's a J at the end. Um, so I'm gonna actually just show you what that is real quick. Um, click on it. And let's see, I'm not sure if Mr. Wilson's still tuned in. I'll let Ms. Rychuk tell me. I know she's on here. Can you uh, can you see the Buzz Tutorials page that I just brought up, Ms. Rychuk? Waiting for a text to come through. I just want to make sure that you all can see what I can see. Okay, she said yes. Good. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll be providing. By the way, um, I guess I should back up and say this. I will be providing all of you with, um, well, I'll be providing with everybody with a link on the district website that will have every link that I'm gonna share with you tonight, in addition to some more resources. Um, those, they will also be on there. And I'll show you here in just a second where that's gonna be. Actually, let me show you how to do it. Um, so if I go to the McGuffey School District website and I pull, um, let it load for a second. And here's your homepage. Um, it's actually gonna be, right here where these buttons are, where it says return to school, McGee online learning hub, all those, there's gonna be a button that says McCyber. And I apologize that I didn't have that launched uh, ready for you tonight, uh, but I'm just building out content on it. Um, and would really like to try to get it live for you tomorrow um, with, with um, all of these resources that I'm sharing and all these links so you don't have to try to save or, or memorize all of them. Um, so yeah, it'll, they'll be right there. Um, let me switch back over to my, my Buzz tutorials page. So this is when I said you might have a little bit of homework here. Um, what I don't, I don't think it would be a good use of our time this evening to sit here and watch every one of these videos about all the different um, ways that you navigate Buzz, um, what, what the different features are, how to take notes, uh, learning objectives, teach it, all these different um, facets of, of the Buzz platform. Um, but, the, but the great thing is they're very user-friendly and they're designed for students uh, to understand um, as much as they can. They might need a little help from mom and dad or, or whoever their caretaker is, um, but they're designed to make it student friendly so that they can understand when they're in the program, how to submit their assessments, but, you know, their tests and things, how to submit their homework, um, how to navigate. I can click on one here and just show you. Um, I don't know if you can hear music on your end, but it's, uh, it's playing on my end here. Um, and she's talking and saying, you know, here's some great tips to get, help you get started. And then they actually show you as the video plays, you know, what um, exactly how to walk through each of the different portions of Buzz. So you've got some time between now and next week. Um, I definitely would encourage you to spend some time in these tutorials um, because they do a better job than I could of explaining their of their platform. Um, and each one of them is just, you know, a couple minutes long. 
um, you know, two or three minutes each. And then you can see that there's um, nine to 11 of those. Um, so definitely encourage you to check out those videos. And if you have questions after you've watched them, um, please let us know and we'll be happy to help you navigate um, as well. And I'm gonna jump over and actually show you briefly what Buzz looks like um, or what an example of an, of an assessment looks like or a, a, you know, a course looks like. The one thing that I would have loved to have been able to do with all of you tonight, but we didn't, we weren't quite there, is I would have loved to have already had your user accounts all set up so you could follow along with me. But that being said, um, what I'm gonna show you is it, basically an example of what you're gonna see anytime you're using, um, you're using Buzz because they pretty much have the, uh, you know, the same format. The content maybe you know, will change obviously depending on grade levels and subjects and things, but, um, but what, you, what you can see here on my screen is what it's going to look like when you're in, I use the example of English language art three. Um, and again, those videos that I just linked you to will actually be able to show you, um, you know, how, to, how to then do some of the technical things in it. Um, but the, um, it, they'll walk you through these portions as well. But if you were logged in, you would see over here on the right hand side um, where it says course and then student, um, you would be able to see kind of your drop down where you've got your information about your student account, um, their settings and some things like that you can do. Now you may, um, one thing, this one may have a few more features than, than what you'll have um, just because of the, um, the specific account, but essentially you'll be able to see your profile settings over here in Buzz and make adjustments to those if needed. Um, when you're over here on the left in what's sometimes called a hamburger um, menu right here, because it's I guess it's supposed to look like a hamburger or a sandwich or something, um, you'll see um, in this example, I've got the English Language Arts 3 course open, and then there's a, there's a kind of a sub-menu right there for activities, and then a sub-menu for grades. So if I click on the activities, uh, here I am, I'm at the home page for English Language Arts 3. I've got an activities list here and it shows I've got, I've made no progress in my learning so far. Um, so I haven't been a very good Mr. H. I, have, I haven't been doing my uh, ELA 3. Well, maybe I'm just, just starting. So, um, and it shows me um, a couple of things. So I've got these folders that have these, you know, these drop down menus with the different lessons in them. And you'll see that there, there's, there's generally a pattern. Uh, there's a little bit of variety to it. But the, um, so the unit here is growing up um, and it's part of this bigger context of main ideas and details that we're learning about in English 3. And in lesson 16 here, um, you can see there are all these kind of sub um, components of, the, of lesson number 16. Um, click on one for you. So main ideas and details in the teach it section. Um, and so what you can see here is you get a little bit of an introduction, okay? And then you're going to watch a video clip that will start talking to you about, um, you know, about this concept of main ideas and details. They're going to walk you through a little bit of that instruction. Okay. And point out a few other things to you here. So up at the top, you have your arrows for your next activity. So it's pretty user, I mean, pretty intuitive, pretty, I think at least it's, it's fairly easy to understand once you get the hang of it as a kid. Um, but you can see, you know, when you're done with that video portion, um, you can go on and it takes you to the next activity, okay? And so it'll ask, you know, this particular, um, you know, lesson that I, or part of the lesson that I just clicked on says, um, did you know is the, is the bigger question that's asking and then it's saying, uh, what is the main idea of a story, right? And then when you click on the show answer, it says the main idea is what the story is mostly about. And then as you scroll down, you'll see that it talks a little bit more about the idea of, the idea of finding the main idea. Um, and as you can see, there's a variety of different ways that you can interact in each of the lessons. So I clicked that one and it looks like it's, it's gone back, but I clicked it and it revealed the, the answer there. Um, as I scroll down, I've got, um, I get to this section, it says, what are all the details about the main idea in the section of the text? You can make a list if that will help you. And, it asks you a couple of different questions as you scroll through uh, that are part of the learning activity. Um, it says, when you figure out what the supporting details have in common, you have most likely stumbled onto the main idea. Um, and then it gives you a little tip here. Sometimes you may need to go back and read a paragraph or part of a story again. Okay, so it gives you, um, 
So built into the lessons are kind of these tips and things along the way. It gives you an example down here of an old rabbit okay, that lived in the woods. Um, and you can see here, as you scroll down, um, it breaks out, it's broken. This would have been previous learning to this lesson, uh, but, but um, this context, the idea of the main character I or idea, the supporting details, the common idea, and then um, again, it, this specific lesson is about uh, the main idea and details. Um, and then you have an example here at the end of like a little uh, activity to check understanding. So which of the following are three big details about the rabbit's treasure? Well, I don't know because I didn't, uh, I didn't read the story there, but since A has three things, I'm gonna guess that's the correct answer. Sparkly, big, and heavy, I'm gonna submit it. Uh, it says my answer is partially correct, but I need to reread the text to look for the details about the old rabbit's treasures. Um, so it looks like I need to go back and, uh, and check my work there. Um, but that's the basic idea of how you navigate the lessons in Buzz. Um, as you keep clicking through, it takes you to each of the next sections of the lesson, again, with different videos and activities that you would complete along the way. Um, and it'll continue to move you through the, the learning series until you finish lesson 16. Um, let's go back here. Um, so basically what I was doing was I was going through this list, but instead of coming back to this list every time, I was just clicking on those arrows that were up there on the top left and it was taking me through. Um, you also notice, so that's an activities tab there. You'll also notice on the right here, there's a to-do list. So if you had any associated assignments or anything that you needed to be working on uh, that the teacher might've assigned to that, um, that particular lesson, you would see that over here on your to-do list. So you can see right now, I, I have no activities that are currently due. Um, let me show you how, so that's the general kind of outline of how the, how the um, how, how a course would be structured, how a lesson would be structured in Buzz. Again, it's a little hard to say blanket statement, here's exactly what they're all gonna look like because they have a lot of different courses for different grade levels and depending on which grade level and which course, um, you, you know, you'll see, a, you might see some fairly different types of activities, but you'll see the same structure for kind of navigating through Buzz. What you'll, um, what I would encourage you to do well, once you're able to get into your actual user accounts with your enrollments and things, it'll, you know, you'll be free to explore a little bit in there. Um, but I would also encourage you to do is, and I'll put you, I'll put the link on, uh, on the site for you, but uh, I would encourage you to also go back and look, Lincoln Learning actually lets you preview a lot of their courses um, without even having to be enrolled in them, where you could actually go through and kind of practice and get familiar with the different, um, what the different learning activities and things might look like. Again, you're welcome to do that. You don't even have to have an account to do that. And I'll provide you the link uh, to be able to do that um, on that that I was talking about. Uh, let me click onto the grades real quick, um, just so you can see this. So this particular lesson doesn't have any gradable activities. Um, if it did, you would see up here at the top where it says, uh, what percentage of my gradable activities are complete? So let's say I had two activities I should have completed in this lesson. If I've done one of them, it's going to say 50% of my gradable activities are completed. Um, and then it's going to say the number of all the activities completed. In this case, there are 26 in the lesson. When you see activity, don't panic. Um, it doesn't mean, you know, a full on, an activity might be clicking one thing, um, answering a question or something. That would be an activity to complete. Um, so there will be, again, bigger and smaller activities based on the exact type of work that you're doing. Um, and what the particular lesson or, or content um, is that you're working on in your grade level. Um, as you click through across the top, this, some of this might be, I mean, this might be a little bit more for some of our older elementary students or parents um, to look through where it's gonna tell you a little bit more about, you know, objective mastery, um, you know, what their uh, activity has been like in the, in the lesson. So, so, and some of these things, um, like I said, they're not gonna they're not gonna necessarily matter or make sense to some of our littlest ones, uh, but hopefully for our older elementary students, they might you know want to thumb through some of these tabs to kind of help them also understand their learning a little bit and how they're doing in the um, in their progress. Um, this might be a good moment to, well, yeah, this might be a good moment to just pause and, and remind everybody of something that I brought up at the town hall meeting. Um, which is that for the K to five students, we're going to have, it's gonna be a little bit different than the way we're doing secondary. The K to five students will have 
a, uh, a teacher facilitator who's a McGuffey faculty member. And, and the way that's gonna work is one teacher is gonna oversee the students in McCyber from K to two, and then the other teacher is gonna oversee the students in McCyber from grades three to five. And when I say oversee, what they're basically doing is they're kind of, they're not teaching the course um, because they're gonna oversee a lot of kids. So they can't possibly teach all these students in a cyber environment. Uh, but what they basically do is kind of act as like an intermediary between the family and the school. So because your students are still McGuffey students, um, we're providing a faculty member to, to work with them and to say, uh, to check in with, you know, your child and say, hey, Sarah, um, you know, it's, um, it's Mrs. Smith today and I'm checking in with you. Um, I noticed that it looked like when we were working on our uh, you know, learning our nouns uh, on, in your English lesson yesterday, you might have been having a little bit of a hard time with that. And I was looking at some of your activities that you completed. Uh, so I want to, let's take a moment and talk about that, you know, and maybe work through some things with them. Um, it's more than just somebody to check their, you know, attendance and make sure things are, you know, that they're getting announcements and stuff. All that's important, but we also um, are going, we're expecting these teachers uh, to, actually help students with their learning progress as well. So Lincoln Learning does the work of, of the online actual content and the, even some of the grading. Our McGuffey teacher that oversees your child's grade span, they'll be the ones that will help facilitate their learning if they're struggling, help them with their lessons. And to, you know, if you run into a roadblock with Buzz and you're not quite understanding a part of a lesson or your child is struggling with that, uh, that person will be the person that you'll be able to reach out to. And I'm going to provide you with their contact information, what that's going to look like here um, a little bit in, or further into my, um, into my presentation. Um, I'm going to switch back to my slideshow and keep moving on that. Um, just so I uh, hope we don't, I don't want to run out of time with some of the other things I wanted to get to. Um, so hopefully you can see my, my slideshow again. Uh, click in here. So I wanted to, this is the part where I wanted to answer some of the questions. And some of these were things I've already touched on in the town hall, but I just want to remind folks in case they weren't on that meeting. Um, one of the big questions that we've gotten a lot is, do I follow a daily schedule for my learning? And one of the benefits of our McCyber program is that learning happens, we use this word asynchronously, just meaning it's not live. So you can, you can complete work in the evenings or on weekends if you like. You can be pretty flexible with it. Um, there might be times when you know, a McGuffey teacher or an online teacher might need something by a certain time. Uh, that's probably not going to happen very often, but if it does happen, uh, they'll, they'll certainly let you know that with plenty of, you know, plenty of advance notice. But for the most part, your learning is pretty independent. Now, that doesn't mean that you just can't, you know, go to school for a week uh, because you're in the cyber school. Um, you're still, and I'll, I'm going to address this here in a second, but you're still required to attend school every day under Pennsylvania law. And that's true whether you went to McGuffey Cyber or anybody else's cyber. Um, but what we're saying is uh, the difference is, you know, when a student goes to school, they are on a, you know, something of a schedule all day long. Whereas when you're in McCyber, you have a lot of flexibility as a family to decide what your day is going to look like. Um, and, that, and then, you know, if there is a roadblock or you're running into a problem with that or your McGuffey teacher notices that, uh, they might be reaching out to you to say, hey, I'm a little concerned. It looks like, you know, yesterday nobody logged in. It doesn't look like anything was completed. Um, you know, what, what's going on there? Um, so that's part of that role that they have. But, but the short answer is no, you don't have to follow a daily schedule. Um, I would recommend you follow some kind of schedule that your family develops. Um, and, we, and your counselors will be happy to help you put that together. Um, but, but, um, but technically, no, it's, it's, it's uh, pretty independent. Uh, will my will I be able to learn in a live session with a and with a McGuffey teacher? Um, at this time, the answer to that's no. Um, but that doesn't mean that you won't ever have live interaction with a McGuffey teacher. It just means that as far as the actual you know daily lessons and learning through Buzz, uh, that's all happening in the digital world. Um, so there's not live instruction. But you may have live sessions with your McGuffey teacher. They might be holding office hours. Uh, to answer your questions and provide support, things like that. And they'll communicate the specifics of that uh, with you once you get rolling. Um, how will I receive my login information for Buzz? You know what? I actually realized on this slide, I didn't put the link on there, but I'll, uh, I'll make sure to put the link for to access the um, login for Buzz once you have your user account set up on, my, um, on that 
uh, page on the McGuffey website I was showing you earlier. Um, your login information is going to be your standard McGuffey School District username and password. I know for our littlest ones and maybe our families who are new to the district, um, you might not know what I'm talking about, but that's okay. We're going to get that information to everybody, regardless of whether or not you know um, that username and password. Uh, the way it works basically is we use, um, I think it's the first four letters of your last name, first four of your first name, and your graduation year, and then as your username, and then your Password is your student ID number. Um, but again, don't worry about, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about having to try to figure that out right now. We will make sure that you get your, your login information um, you know, uh, to give you time to get in and explore a little bit before school starts. Speaking of school starting, well, wow, that was a nice transition. I didn't even think I planned that. Um, school starts for, for students in K-5 to on the McGuffey calendar. So school will start on Thursday, August 27th. Okay? When, when I say school starts for McCyber, that means you're, learn, you're logging in on day one, um, on August 27th, your accounts should be set up, all your classes should be ready to go. Um, you'll probably be receiving some kind of, I shouldn't say probably, you will be receiving some kind of um, contact, whether it be videos or letters or what, from your McGuffey teacher facilitators um, to welcome you to school. And um, you'll probably be receiving some things too from your respective building, if you're, depending on whether you're at Claysville or Joe Walker. Um, but one thing I want to note, in case you have kids in the upper grades, so the secondary school students are going to start on Tuesday, September 1st. And the reason for that is um, the, they are going to be following the intermediate units calendar, not the McGuffey School District calendar, uh, as, far, as far as the academic calendar goes. So because they're the ones hosting the, the online learning. So secondary students will begin September 1st. Our K-5 to five students, they'll begin on the McGuffey calendar, August 27th. Uh, what supplies do we need? I know a lot of parents have asked this question. So let me, let me say this. There are supplies listed for each of the courses in Lincoln Learning. But that being said, you don't actually need supplies to do any of these learning activities. However, um, there will be some sessions and things throughout where you, you, your child may find it helpful to have some things. Um, what, from what I understand, I haven't been in and looked at every single one of these supply things that are mentioned in there, but from what I understand, a lot of them are standard kind of office supplies or things you might have around the house. So an example um, that one of their, you know, one of the Lincoln Learning folks told me was, you, it might say something like you need counting blocks. Well, that doesn't mean you actually have to go out and buy counting blocks. It just means that they, you might need to find 10, um, I don't know, beans or you know, something like that around the house so that they can, your child can use them to count. Um, again, there may be some more specific things like that that you'll see once you get in there that you might wanna you know, run to Dollar General and purchase, but you don't, um, but most of these things are gonna be pretty standard school supply type things. And I guess the most important thing for me uh, to, to say to all of you right now is don't panic about school supplies because you're in a cyber program, your kids are at home, um, and there's not going to be anything on day one that's going to require like, oh, we didn't get purple glitter. Um, if you ask me purple glitter should be glitter should be that's a different story. Um, but don't don't panic if you're if you're not sure about the supplies thing yet. It's not like it's not like in school where you know people start working on their you know their name tag on day one and and everyone needs a marker. It's not anything like that. Um, you know, and one of the other things to point out is that each of the lessons will also cue the cue your child to say, "Hey, you know, have your scissors ready for this one, uh, for this lesson coming up." And so they can grab a pair of scissors or something like that. But again, they don't necessarily have to have them. Um, but just be just as you're logging in and looking at some of these supplies, um, if you see, you know, it's kind of up to your discretion the extent to which you want to go out and buy school supplies as part of the program. That being said, two things: one. Um, Lincoln Learning does actually provide supply kits and, and paper copies of the workbooks. You don't need a paper copy of the workbook, but they do have, it's digital, and you can actually, if you have a printer at home and you want to print it, you can do that. Um, but they do supply those things. Again, not mandatory, totally optional if your family would prefer to spend the money on like a kit rather than having to go to the store and buy a bunch of pencils and things, you can do that. Um, I put the link in there, and again, I'll give you this link with all the other links on the McGuffey website. Um, 
But if you want to do that, if you want to order one of those, the best thing to do would be to email me and let me know that. And then I'll kind of be the in-between with you and Lincoln as far as they'll just send, they can mail those directly to your home or they can mail them to Claysville or Joe Walker and you can pick them up there, um, whatever the case might be. But um, again, not mandatory, but if you're interested in purchasing their supply kits, you can do that. If you would like some supplies and you need some financial assistance, please email me or Mrs. Fleck. Oops, I put Mrs. Mrs. Fleck. Um, Mr. Wolf or Mr. Gotrin. Uh, any of us that are administrators in the district, we are happy to help. We'll protect your privacy, uh, but we get that these are hard times for a lot of families, and some folks may not be able to spend much on supplies. But you don't, you know, you'd like to get your child a few things. Please reach out to us. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Um, we have resources that are given to us, um, you know, as a school to be able to help families, and that's what we want to do. So uh, please reach out to us if we can help you with that. When will we get a Chromebook and internet device if we needed one? The Chromebooks and Jetpacks are going to be distributed at the beginning of next week, and that's going to happen at the buildings. So if you're a Joe Walker family, you'll go to Joe Walker to pick up your Chromebook. If you indicated on the return to school survey that you needed a Jetpack for, for um, internet connection, you'll be able to pick that up when you pick up your Chromebook as well. Um, I'm going to click on this link um, really quickly to show you. Uh, there's a page set up. Actually, if I back up here to the McGuffey homepage, and um, scroll down to the second news story. It says Chromebook distribution 2020, 2021. Mr. Wilson put a link on there that takes you to this one-to-one -one computing page. Um, it's got a bunch of information about our Chromebook initiative. And then um, this is the, this is kind of what I want to point out. About halfway down the page here, uh, there's this Chromebook distribution process 2021. And in it, uh, Mr. Wilson has outlined basically how this process is going to work. I don't want to uh, necessarily sit here and read it with everybody with our limited time, but um, but that page is on there. And if you have questions about that, please let us know um, once you've had a chance to read it over. The thing I want to point out to you that I would encourage is you can electronically submit these forms this year. So I would highly encourage that you go on ahead of time and submit the forms. And then that way they're already gone. Mr. Wilson has them and we can get you your Chromebook without a without delay. Um, how does attendance work with McCyber? I know I touched on this a minute ago. The students in McCyber still fall under the state's requirements for daily school attendance. So the way you're going to basically log that is you're going to be logging at daily attendance by, by logging into Buzz. Um, and then our teacher facilitators are also going to be looking for more than just logging in. They're going to be kind of going through the lessons at, at a high level and looking to see if little Sarah actually did something in English today. Um, or does she log into Buzz at 8 a.m. and then we had no no peep that she ever did anything else throughout the day? Um, so you got, so logging in is important each day, but so is um, actually engaging in the lesson. Now that being said, there are going to be times when, um, like I said, you don't have to necessarily um, complete all your, all of a day's work at at an exact time. Our teachers are actually kind of planning to think about attendance a few days. Uh, behind, if that makes sense, as far as accountability goes, because we recognize that, well, maybe Sarah only looked like she was in for English for, you know, a uh, half an hour today, and, and she's got another 15 minutes she needs to finish. Well, she might finish it at six o'clock that night, and that's okay. Um, you're not going to get a phone call from the teacher that she didn't have it, you know, finished um, as soon as, you know, as soon as by 9 a.m. or anything like that. Um, but if we haven't seen her finish it in two days, you might, you might get an email or a phone call uh, to check in and see what's going on. Uh, who can I contact at McGuffey if I need help with technology? Again, this information will be there. It's the McGee Student Help Desk at mcguffey.k12.pa.us. That's the best way. But if your technology problem isn't allowing you to email, or you know, um, which may happen, then you can call the central office number 948-3731 and ask to speak to Jody White or Mike Wilson I mean, they could try to help you out. But the best thing to do is to use that McGee student help desk email because that generates like a ticket system and then we can make sure that we're getting back to you. Um, who can I contact if we need help with schoolwork? So I said, start with the teacher facilitators is the best place to start. So for McCyber for K-2, that's gonna be uh, Miss Curtis, Shannon Curtis. Um, I had somebody listed for three to five uh, and then we found out that that uh, changed because of that uh, particular person's 
uh, something in a uh, personal life. It had nothing to do with um, with school or anything like that. Um, that we're just going to need to to make a change into which teacher is going to be facilitating the three to five. So I'm working with Ms. Fleck and Mr. Gotrin to get that all ironed out. And I was hoping to have the name for you by tonight. Um, I will we will get that name to you as soon as we uh, as soon as we're done moving some things around in the schedule a little bit to to know who that person's going to be definitively. Uh, the counselors are listed there. So these would be kind of the next uh, most helpful probably people to go to. Uh, Ms. McGraw and Ms. McLaughlin at Claysville. Uh, Ms. McGraw is filling in for Ms. Adler, uh, who's been out on leave. Um, so Ms. McGraw is, um, is at Claysville to help. And then Ms. Mrs. Uh, Delvito at Joe Walker um, is the counselor there and happy to help. And then if, uh, if you still need help with something or you're having a hard time getting a hold of somebody, uh, Ms. Fleck and Mr. Wolf at Claysville and Mr. Otrin, who's the acting principal at Joe Walker right now, they're all happy to help as well. And I'm happy to help too. I'm um, just trying to start with who will probably be the most helpful along the way, because by the time one of us comes in, we need like, you know, two days of backstory to even understand where we are, where like Ms. Curtis and the other facilitator might have a better idea of what, you know, what your child has been working on. Where can we find more training information for parents and students? So what I put on there in that first link is gonna be that McCyber link on the McGuffey homepage. And that's where I've been talking about, I'm gonna populate all those different videos and things into that. Um, I said by the end of this week, hopefully by tomorrow, I'll have that all up live for you. Um, and you'll be able to click through and watch all those things. We're also gonna use um, either, I'm, I'm still deciding if I wanna use this website or if I wanna use the Google Classroom, but we are gonna set up some way to make sure that you're also, uh, available to get like school announcements and bigger things going on at McGuffey because we don't want you to feel disconnected from the school district. You're still McGuffey families. Uh, so we're going to set up a way, like I said, either Google Classroom or uh, through the website to get you information so that you kind of can keep an eye, a track of what's going on in the district. Um, and we're not going to be taking you off of Claysville or Joe Walker's emails and phone calls. So maybe you want to be off of them depending on how many Ms. Fleck sends. I've heard she sends a lot. Um, but you'll still be plugged into what's going on at those buildings. Some of it may not always apply to you, but you'll at least know, hey, there's a PTO meeting coming up. There's a field training coming up. Things like that. Um, and then, like I mentioned a couple of times, Buzz has loads of helpful videos and resources. Um, in addition to those video links I showed you earlier, there's also these great, what they call student experience videos, one for K to two and one for three to five. And those are a really nice like overview of um, what it's like to be a student using Buzz and Lincoln Learning. Um, again, one of them's designed to be younger, so K to two, and the other one's a little bit older, three to five. Um, I don't want to spend time watching each of those right now, but I'll post those for you to be able to watch um, as a family and kind of get give you an intro uh, to the whole to the larger idea of learning um, in the Buzz system. Um, and my last slide here, I want to go over a glossary of terms just as a reminder, because I know I use lots of terms and I, I want to make sure I'm clear. So McCyber is McGuffey School District's five-day cyber program. You're full McGuffey students, but you're, in, you're, out, you're, you're not at school during the five days a week. That is not the same as remote. Okay, So we're, um, we're using this language specifically. So remote and hybrid learning, those are the, the they kind of go hand in hand. Those are the days when the kids like would come to school in a blue or gold group and then be off the other days to work from home. Um, so, the, so we use the word remote to describe those off days. Some people have asked, well, if we go fully remote, do we then become McCyber students or, does, do, or if we're in McCyber, but then the school goes fully remote, can we switch, them, can we switch our child back over? Um, and what I said to people all along, my opinion about that is, is that you wanna minimize transitions back and forth between all these different platforms. Because no matter how hard we try, McCyber and McGuffey School are not gonna be on the same page all the time. That's just gonna happen because they're two different learning experiences. So I'm afraid that if kids get into too much of that back and forth between programs, it's gonna disrupt their learning and make things even more challenging in what's already kind of a challenging year with school. So my advice would be to just stay put because we might go, the district might go remote for five days, but it might only be for a week. And then we're coming back to hybrid. Um, and you don't want to be switching between McCyber and hybrid or remote and then back to McCyber if we come back or anything like that. Um, intermediate unit one, uh, I know I used, uh, you probably haven't heard me use that, but I'm just throwing it out there in case you hear me talking about it as part of the secondary stuff. 
Um, Intermediate Unit 1 is just a local organization that supports the districts in Washington, Green, and Fayette counties. Uh, sometimes you'll hear it called IU1 for an abbreviation. Buzz is the online learning platform. Um, I wanted to mention this one, Pulse. You might hear me say the word Pulse. You might hear your teacher or your principal say the word Pulse. Pulse is the online platform related to Lincoln, but that has to do with more like the administrative stuff. How you enroll students in classes. How do you set up user accounts? How do you make sure mom's email address is in there correctly? Um, it's where I can run reports and see how students are doing or where the principal can run reports, things like that. So um, from what I understand at this point, there won't be you know, uh, much reason for parents to ever really spend time in Pulse, but I wanted to throw it out there in case you heard us talking about it. Um, and then Lincoln Learning Solutions, I've said several times throughout this, is the, is the organization, the greater organization. All right, 620. Um, and I, let me, let me, uh, let me stop sharing here for a second. Just make sure there's, uh, there's nothing else on here that I wanted to, I had a bunch of tabs open, so I want to make sure I'm, um, I covered all the tabs I wanted to show you before we open it up for questions in this last little bit. Um, well, it looks like we, looks like we got through it. Um, oh, I was going to show you one other thing. Let me, let me share real quick. This, uh, let's see, no, not my presentation. I showed you that. <laughs> All right, can you see my course kits and materials list, hopefully? Um, am, I, am I still sharing? Let's see. Yes, it looks like I am. Okay, this course kits and materials, uh, this is what I was talking about when I was saying they have prepackaged supply kits for you. Um, so if you need anything in relation to those that you want to just purchase, um, you know, uh, this is where I'll put a link to this and you can go through and read what those different supply kits and workbook amounts look like um, and what they provide for each of them. I mean, they've got the whole long list of courses on here. Um, a lot of it won't even be relevant to you. But if you're interested in that, I'll send I'll give you the link to that as well. OK, let me come back on here and we've got a couple minutes. Um, happy to take questions that you might have, and if I don't know an answer, I'm happy to get you an answer as soon as I can. So, um, and typically at this time, if you have a question you'd like to ask, feel free to raise your hand, and uh, I think Mr. Nelson's going to help me facilitate calling on folks. Uh, I see Tiffany's hand up. Um, if you'd like to unmute your mic, you should be able to. So it looks like Tiffany's version of Zoom is out of date. If she updates it, she should be able to come on as a and and talk. Okay, um, Tiffany, if it's if it's not letting you um, use the microphone to connect, please uh, feel free to email me, or I can give you a call tomorrow um, and help answer any questions that you might have. Um, we still got a couple of minutes, so if it does it update or whatever it needs to do to let you talk, feel free to um, try again. Rob, you can unmute your microphone. Okay. Oh, there, we oh, there I, they are. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Kim. Um, my question is about how long, what is the uh, like school time, I guess? What, what's the learning time? Like, is it an all day thing or, I mean, or, or I know it's based on their own sure. progress and everything, but I mean, generally, is it like an hour per subject or? Yeah, I don't, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know ex exact times um, in relation to each of the, co the courses, but what, so I, I should say this, so each, the, the students will have their core classes, so English, math, science, and history uh, or social studies. Those will be um, actually for the K to two band. Um, we're those science and social studies classes will actually be. This is going to sound funny, but they're going to be semester long classes that are going to be spread out over a year, so that the students can alternate days and not not have to do both subject both subjects each day. 
um, from what, and then they're gonna have um, PE art and music. And then there may be some library activities and things that kids are going to walk these people in as part of their learning. Uh, but those are the core classes they'll be in in Lincoln. So they're four core and then PE art and music. My understanding, um, it, there, there's a, you know, there's some variety in that based on the projects and things that they're doing. Uh, I hope I'm not misspeaking, but my my understanding at this point was that um, I would plan for approximately three to four hours a day total um, in terms of like the, the learning portion with Lincoln. Um, there may be some extra activities and things outside of that where, uh, you know, where you're where they're going to be working on some other follow up activities and stuff as part of just their practice and learning. Uh, but that's my my sense of it, that it would be about half of a typical school day in terms of actual time spent on the platform. Um, again, I hope I'm not misspeaking because I haven't been able to go through every one of the courses at each of the grade levels and see for myself um, what those time limits look like. But it should not it should not be an entire anything like an entire school day where you're just sitting in front of a, a, you know, a laptop instead of being in in school itself. Is that helpful? I know that's not a very clear answer, but um, that's that's my understanding of where it is with as I've been in and out of the courses. Yeah, that is actually very helpful. One of my biggest concerns was, are they going to be sitting sure. staring at a laptop for eight hours? Um, I do have one other question. Sure. Now, if they're in the middle of one of their lessons and they have a question, are they able to, you know, um, like send an email to somebody or something like that to get an answer? Because, you know, even even if I'm at home, I'm still working full time. Sure. Oh, sure. Yes. So the way we're setting it up with the facilitators, you know, they are mostly going to be spending their day, if not entirely, only facilitating McCyber. So there will be, uh, you know, their assigned teacher at the school um, will be largely available. Now, I can't say that they won't be on the phone with somebody or, you know, or maybe in some kind of meeting um, or, you know, they're going to have a lunch and a prep. But my understanding of the way it, that all works in LinkedIn, too, is if you're in the middle of something, you're just dead stopped because you can't, you know, you don't know where to go um, next in terms of the activity. It should save your progress. And so if your child needed to step out of that learning activity and wait until so-and-so gets a hold of them to help them get an answer or move on, um, they can do that and it won't reset them or anything like that. Um, it tracks their progress, you know, at each step along the way. Uh, but there is, there, you know, we are setting it up to where they should have access to these McGuffey facilitators um, and that they would have dedicated office hour time um, where they would also just be freely available to help families. Okay, okay, and um, one more quick thing. <laughs> now, um, uh, we obviously have internet issues where we have internet, but sometimes it just disconnects because sure. we are so far out. Um, will it save their work or will it just stop right there and you mean everything's the internet, lost? If it cuts right. out? Right. I, from what I understand, it will save their work at each at each place along the way. I mean, I let me, that's a great, let me, let me follow up. because I want to get you a better answer than just, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, okay. So let me ask their, let me ask their tech people tomorrow, but I am almost, I feel quite confident that, that we were told in the beginning of all this, that, that, that it would, that, you know, if the internet goes out, um, it's not going to re it's not going to, you know, erase all of their progress for that day or anything like that, because it's all connected to their servers. So, you know, where that's all being hosted. So even if you drop connection, I think as long as their server is still there, um, you know, you may, there might be a, now if she, you know, if a student's typing in a text box, that probably won't be saved. Um, but as far as like a larger lesson or something like that, I, I think you'd, I think you'd be fine. But let me, okay. um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get you a better answer than that. And I'll post that on the site. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Uh, Tiffany, I think is, oh, there she is. Okay. Hi. Hi. So I have a question because we, after we got the state mandate that came down Monday, yes. went ahead and switched our child over to the cyber because we know that the mask is going to be an issue for her. 
Okay. But now after listening to this presentation, I had a different idea of cyber after going through some education of other cyber schools. Okay. You know, there are teacher interactions. There are, are those types of visualizations where the student could actually interact in real time with the student at that time. That is not the case with this cyber. So how do I, do I just call the school and say, we're not doing cyber. We're going to do brick and mortar and get her back into her gold team two days a week sure which building are you at joe walker yeah if you just call joe walker's main office all you have to do is talk to miss hogue or mr gotrin and they can, I've tried. They can change it i've left messages they never okay. call back <laughs> i'm sorry about um, that the phones were pretty busy the past couple of days yeah um, with I, the state mandate i think a lot of yeah, parents yes. panic, <laughs> yeah. but yeah i um, will uh tiffany i will make it a point to make sure that either myself or somebody gets a hold of you tomorrow how's that sound um, that sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Sorry about that. And yeah, I know that they've, they've been pretty busy in those offices. Yeah, and it's okay. I mean, we thought we were doing the right thing by doing cyber, but you know, sure. this is just self-paced and I don't know that for a yeah. fourth grader, it's the right fit for where sure. we are right now. And cyber is not, I don't take offense to that. Cyber and the cyber platform is not for everybody. Um, and they are, and there are differences between the different cyber platforms. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I I don't have a problem with that at all. I totally understand that for some families it works, and for some, um, the hybrid is a better move right now. So. And it, will they be able, if I talk to them, if I get to talk to somebody, can they explain, like I know they were still working on it, like if there are going to be allotted break times throughout the day for the kids to get a break from mask other than lunch? Yeah, probably Mr. Gotrin would be the person. So let me have, I'll have him specifically give you a call. He's the acting principal down there. Um, that would because, be perfect. Yeah, he would know more about what they're doing at their building with those with those breaks. Um, okay. I do know I, they're definitely working on a plan for breaks. Um, okay. Yeah, but boy, we were digesting all the new guidance um, as well. So, so in the midst we. of everything else. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. You're welcome. Um, a little past six thirty here, so um, I'm gonna. And uh, unless someone just has a burning question related to elementary um, that I can take, um, it looks like uh, Mary Ellen Wheeler. Uh, let's see if I can allow you to talk to it. Oh, there you go. And if you could unmute your mic. And please repeat how many hours the kids are going to be on the, the computers. Yeah, so what I was explaining was, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't know, I can't definitively say because I haven't been through every one of those grade level contents myself. I mean, but I, I mean, I haven't actually sat there and worked through the content of each lesson through each grade level. Um, my estimate with that is approximately three to four hours for their, for the, for the elementary. The upper elementary may have a bit more because they're gonna have their full social studies and science where the K to two students will have a little bit less. So um, my, again, my understanding will be, I'd say in the three and a half hour range for the younger ones, maybe a little more like four and a half for the upper elementary. Um, but again, you don't have to do that in one setting. Um, you know, that can be spread throughout the day or however your family wants to structure that. Okay, thank you. How about well, the IEP? How's that gonna work for IEP students? Yes, so that's a great question. So anybody that's listening that uh, has a student with an IEP, um, the special services will be reaching out to you specifically to talk about, you know, what that's going to look like for your specific child and how those how those um, uh, accommodations or modifications will be made. We will communicate that those IEP requirements uh, to the online facilitators through Lincoln, um, and then that child's uh, McGuffey facilitators will, you know, will also be helping with that. And then I know that they're going to have your uh, all the students who have IPs will still have special services case management um, that will, you know, that serves that same role as if they were in school where they're uh, keeping an eye on, you know, what the specially designed instruction looks like and, um, and making sure it's being implemented faithfully. Uh, Ms. Reichick is on the call. Um, I, not, I hate to put her on the spot. Um, I don't even know if I can, if I can even pull her over to talk about it, but um, Carissa, text me if you, if you uh, have anything more to, oh, okay. She said she'll, uh, She'll be happy to follow up um, with folks on here uh, with a phone call or an email um, to, to touch base with you specifically. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
Oh, looks like she came on here. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. That was perfect response. Oh, and I have the name of the parent. I just wrote it down and I'll call you tomorrow, Ms. Wheeler. That was actually Yvonne Harris that was talking. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys are switching names. <laughs> we were both listening together. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, okay. I don't see any more um, hands up at the moment. So I'm gonna roll into the secondary portion. Um, if any folks from um, elementary, you know, uh, need to exit, please, you know, feel free to, or you're welcome to stick around and watch the secondary portion. Um, all right. And I know we have folks probably coming in and out on YouTube as well, so. Okay, let me switch over to my secondary slideshow. And again, folks, if you were here for the elementary or you're watching on YouTube and you have specific questions that you didn't have time or didn't occur to you until you're laying in bed tonight thinking about it, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to me directly. Um, you can email our return to school at mcguffey.k12.pa.us. We'll be happy to help answer whatever questions you have. All right, let me share my screen. Get a sip of water. My wife is ordering pizza in the background, so I'm getting excited. Let's see. Okay. Share. There we go. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's uh, I'm using two monitors, and my uh, <laughs> my my. Uh, there we go. Let's swap those. My one's being kind of fussy here. Okay. Mrs. Reichick, I'm going to count on you one more one more time to tell me if you can see my uh, my yellow slideshow here. She's my sidekick. Okay, she says I'm good. All right, <laughs> welcome everybody. Uh, or if you're sticking around, thanks for sticking around. Uh, we'll take you through the six to twelve portion, which is a little bit different than what we're doing with McCyber um, in the uh, in the younger grades. So, um, click through here. All right, so um, the biggest difference to note with the two, um, with the two different programs is, you know, uh, McCyber for the younger students is through Lincoln Learning Solutions at this time. For the older students, it's through uh, Intermediate Unit 1, uh, which if you attended my uh, presentation in, in July, you would have heard all about that. Um, it's through the Intermediate Unit and it's, it's their, their program and you might see this word around is fusion. Um, and actually, I have a glossary of terms. I kind of wonder, I'm going to reverse my slideshow here and actually go to my glossary of terms first. Probably should have put that in the beginning before I, in the last one. So let's jump to the last slide here um, and show you the glossary. And then, oh, I clicked, I clicked all the way through. I got, uh, I got too excited there. Let's try that again. All right. Here. There we go. So here in the uh, in the glossary, or you can see the glossary of terms. Um, I've got a couple of different things listed. Um, some of those are uh, terms that are general for uh, the McCyber program, and then some are specific to the secondary portion. So McCyber, again, is McGuffey School District five-day cyber program where our students uh, remain fully McGuffey students uh, with all the access to activities and, and the participation and things that come with, with being a McGuffey student. Uh, but again, that's not to be confused with being a, uh, the hybrid learning model or in remote learning. 
Um, and by remote, we use those words intentionally. Um, remote means the days that the students in the hybrid model are not at school. So on days where uh, if you're in the blue group and you come Monday, Tuesday, um, those Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, when you're not at school, those are your remote learning days. So, and, you know, I've, I've gotten this question about whether or not, um, you know, if we, if the district were to go, have to go to fully remote because of an outbreak or whatever, um, you know, would it make sense to stay with the fully cyber McCyber or try to switch to fully remote with McGuffey um, while that's happening? And my advice is uh, that you, you know, as much as possible, I try to minimize transitions for your kids this year because it's already one heck of a year. And then, um, and then throw on top of that, trying to switch back and forth between programs, I think is really challenging, um, you know, for students. But that's not to say that there may not be a need to change. Maybe McCyber's just not working out for your kid, or maybe you um, are tuning into this, and but you've picked hybrid and you're thinking about cyber. Um, and down the line, you might want to try that if you're, you know, have particular concerns about the virus or something. Um, that's not to say that there couldn't, there's not room for some movement there. But I mean, you know, I would really avoid any temptation to start switching back and forth between, you know, the remote, the cyber, the remote, the McCyber. Um, that's that's going to get messy. Um, intermediate unit one, I know I've used that uh, phrase with all of you. Um, if you've watched my town hall sessions and things, sometimes called just IU1 is a local organization uh, that's um, part of the Department of Education that supports school districts in Washington and Green and Fayette counties. Uh, so these, I, there's a network of intermediate units all across the state of Pennsylvania, and they all are responsible for supporting and providing services, um, usually at a level that's a little bit more than a district could do on their own. So the idea is that there's kind of this unifying group that helps us pull our resources in, and do some of these things. And that's actually where fusion and all of this came from was this group of school districts in Washington and Fayette and Green counties sort of banding together to offer cyber programs. Um, it's a lot to try to do on your own as a district for a lot of reasons, um, not just financially, but in terms of the logistics of it. And so districts banding together under the IU to create this, um, this fusion cyber program that we're then using as, as part of uh, mixed cyber for the older students. Um, so I have the word fusion on the um, on the um, glossary of terms page there. Right under that, you'll see Cyber Solutions Initiative or CSI. That's the same thing as fusion. And I'm only putting it on here because you're probably gonna see fusion and CSI on lots of things. They just changed the name from CSI to fusion. And the reason for that is because last year, the state released an, a system of designating certain schools as needing improvement. And one of those designations is CSI, and it means comprehensive school improvement. Well, Cyber Solutions Initiative didn't want to be using the same abbreviation that meant your school needed major improvement. So they said, well, we we'll probably need to change the name, even though we've been calling ourselves CSI for years, so that people don't misinterpret what we are. So Fusion, CSI, Cyber Solutions, all the same name. You might see different names, or same thing. You might see different names on different, um, different, different areas of their site and in Moodle. Moodle. Moodle is a learning management system. And uh, sometimes you see that abbreviated as an LMS. And a learning management system is basically just where the classes are, where you turn in your homework, where you complete your activities, where you get announcements, things like that. So Moodle, um, there's, a, there's a fun new word for you, um, it will be how the students in six to 12 will access their classes. I'm gonna show you Moodle here in just a minute. The last piece or the last term I put on here is Jupiter. So Jupiter, is a planet. It also is the name of a gradebook, an online gradebook. So um, the IU1 uses Jupiter as their gradebook for their fusion program. So our McCyber students uh, will mostly be using Jupiter for their gradebook. Now, two things related to that. One, there are some classes that are part of um, McCyber that are being developed through Moodle, but because our teachers are teaching them, we're going to use PowerSchool for our grading platform. So that's sort of part one. If your child's in one of those select few classes, they'll, they'll use PowerSchool and you'll know if that's the case. We'll, we'll let you know, you know which grade book your child will be using. Um, now I can't remember what my other point I was gonna make was about, about Jupyter. Um, it's the same login information as Moodle, so you won't have to manage two separate logins. Oh, this was the other thing I was gonna say. 
um, we're still working on the back end to try to understand um, what our reporting requirements will will need in terms of, you know, I, I can go in, principals will be able to go in, look at Jupiter, look at students' grades. Um, what I just need to work out with Mr. Wilson is do we need to also transfer those term grades over to PowerSchool? Because this probably, probably doesn't matter to any of you, but power, we use PowerSchool as a tool. It's not just a great book and for, you know, checking attendance. On our end, it's used for scheduling and it's used for a lot of our state reporting. So I just need to uh, find out from Mr. Wilson if, if there's gonna be a need for Jupiter and PowerSchool to kind of talk to each other. Um, and the reason that I bring that up is because I don't wanna promise anything, but you, if, if that has to be the case, um, you might be able to use PowerSchool to also see your child's term grades. Um, but for now, assume mostly gonna be Jupiter, few select occasions where PowerSchool might be used for the grade book portion, but, um, but mostly gonna be Jupiter right now, one way or the other. All right, now that I've given you all my terms at the end of my slideshow, let me back up to the beginning here. Okay, so uh, let me show you a little bit about Moodle, and then I'm going to answer a bunch of questions for you, and then whatever time you know is remaining after that, I'm um, happy to, to uh, take questions. So one of the important things to understand right off the bat is, oh, um, I, I explained this to the parents earlier in the primary session. I'm working on a link for the McGuffey website that will have all these links and videos and things in it as well. So there's a lot on this on this slot, um, video presentation tonight, but we're recording it. You're welcome to go onto YouTube and rewatch it um, if you want to hear something I said again or uh, see any of these links or resources again. Um, so you don't have to try to write down all these links or anything right now while I'm presenting because I'm going to make the links available for you as soon as I launch that that um, McCyber webpage, hoping to get that done tomorrow. So you should see it pop up. Uh, I'll show you on the school district's website where that's gonna be. And then um, and then you'll have access to all these links and things as well. I'm trying to make it as user-friendly as I can for everybody. But for starters, um, when your child is logging into Moodle, so either note this or if they're not watching, make sure you tell them this, um, you don't just go to Moodle.org, okay? If you go to Moodle.org, you're just being taken to this general um, site out there, okay? What you're going to want to do is go to this link that's it's CSI, which was that Cyber Solutions Initiative, .iu1.org. Again, we'll, we'll provide this link on the site. You'll be able to click on it. You don't have to have it memorized. Um, when, you, when you click on that CSI.iu1.org, it will then take you into, it'll take you to log in, basically, to your, to your Moodle um, platform specific to our program where you'll then be able to see the courses that you're enrolled in and uh, announcements, et cetera. That's where you'll access your daily lessons. It's where you'll turn in your assignments. There's important information in there. Moodle is where you'll live if you're in secondary McCyber. Um, and I put two notes on here. I'm gonna speak about this in, in um, at, uh, greater detail here in a minute, but getting help when I need it as part of uh, being in Moodle and being in McCyber, um, all, this, all of you, all students will be enrolled in a student orientation course. Um, it doesn't count for a grade or anything like that, but it'll automatically be assigned to everybody. And the whole purpose of it is to teach you how to use Moodle. So I'm gonna show you a few things about how to use it, but then I'm gonna, we're gonna require every, well, the IU1 requires everybody go in and, and take the student orientation course and then verify that they took it. Uh, and that way you'll, you'll have, not only will you have been through it initially, but then you'll still be able to go back and reference like, hey, I didn't quite remember how to submit, uh, uh, you know, an image I was supposed to take uh, with my camera on my phone as part of my project. Um, I, I can watch this video and it'll show me how, how to do that. And then we're also going to be developing a McCyber home, uh, home room course that everybody from McGuffey will be enrolled in. And what I'm going to use that for is like, it's going to just look like another class that you're in, but it's not a real, it's not a class. Um, what its purpose is, is to um, basically be a place where I can provide you with uh, McGuffey related announcements, things like that. So if homecoming is coming up, uh, we want to make sure that the secondary McCyber students are aware of those dates. I might put that in the McCyber homeroom. Um, and again, I'll, I'll talk, talk to you a little bit more about that in relation to attendance as well. Um, since I said that, let me let me also just note, um, I'm going to use McCyber Homeroom course as a place for you to get announcements and things. 
but you're also still going to be on the district call lists for your buildings and parent and principal emails and things like that since you're still McGuffin students. So don't think that you that your uh, McCyber homeroom in Moodle is going to be the only place where you'll ever see you know when prom is supposed to be. Um, you're going to um, well whatever's going to happen with prom. <laughs> um, you'll you'll be able to get that same information and such from the buildings that you're in. Okay. Let me click and I'm going to show you what this looks like when you log in. So you go to csi.iu1.org. Um, I'm going to, while that's loading, I'm going to click over here for just a moment um, and show you. So here on, uh, oh, I think you can all see my, my, my new tabs here. Um, here on the McGuffey School District webpage, um, down here on the left where there's the buttons that say return to school, McG online learning hub, et cetera, there's going to be a button that says McCyber, and that's where you'll be able to click and then go into the secondary, you know, 6 to 12 portion and get the links to all the things that you're, um, that you're going to be um, access, that you'll need to access. So that's where that'll be, right, in this uh, section and a button on the front page. Um, all right, let me click back over to Moodle. So I clicked on csi.iu1.org. Um, let me I'll log out. So when you first go there, if you're not logged in, you'll see some general announcements right here. Um, so these are, you know, this one says, welcome to the 2021 Fusion school year. Here's who to contact if you need some assistance. Um, you know, that message was posted this morning at 8 a.m. That's a general message from the intermediate unit. That's not a Nobody from McGuffey posted that. That's the general fusion intermediate unit program. Um, so the first thing that you would do is go in and you'll see on the right over here, your login, your username and your password. Um, you, your usernames, from what I understand, um, we were just talking about this this morning. With us. I'm gonna see if there's anything else we can do about it, but the, typically for the username, they generate one for you. I would really like it if you could just use your standard McGuffey username and password, uh, but they weren't sure if they could do that for us. So not the end of the world. I was just trying to keep things simple for all of you, but um, but I, one way or the other, you will get your username and password uh, sent to you by, by McGuffey. So you'll be getting that soon. Um, and then you'll be able to log into your Moodle courses and look at everything. Um, so let me show you what it looks like. So we log in and, uh, again, in the middle, you can see some general news and things right here. On the right, um, see where it says Fusion Help Desk, um, and it's got three different options for getting help during the during the day um, for things related to Moodle and your online cyber stuff. Um, if you're having problems with a part of the program or you can't quite figure out how to submit something, it doesn't seem to be working or it's giving you an error, uh, anything like that. You can either email them, which is CSI Help Desk at iu1.org. You can call their phone number Monday to Friday, eight to three, uh, or you can use an online chat to get a hold of them. So you have three options for getting a hold of their help desk if you need anything. Um, again, I'm going to provide this contact information for you on the McCyber site, on the McGuffey homepage, to try to make it as easy as possible. To, you'll see it in Moodle, you'll see it in on the McCyber page, you'll see it on the I1, IU1's page. Um, it's everywhere. Um, I do want to note one other thing for you um, over here where it says monthly Moodle maintenance, um, monthly Moodle maintenance. Uh, it does say that that will occur on the third Monday of every month from eight to nine. You might notice that you have trouble getting into Moodle uh, on that third Monday of the month during that one hour block. Um, if that's the case and you're trying to, you know, you knew you, you wanted to work on something Monday morning, um, just be patient with it if it's not letting you in immediately. Uh, but also note that, you know, if your teacher had said that something was due at 8 a.m. on Monday and um, you waited until the last second to go in and you forgot that it's the third Monday and there during that hour, sometimes you can't access it, um, you might be in a little bit of trouble. But um, but for the most part, that's not even how your learning will take place, so it shouldn't be too big of, too big of a deal. Um, and then you'll you actually see down here too, there's this fusion orientation on the right. Um, that's just a quick little YouTube video. It plays right there in the embedded player. You can also click out to YouTube um, and watch that uh, as part of your orientation to um, Cyber Solutions and, um, and the Moodle platform. Um, let's see. 
I'm going to, so switching your eyes over here to the left side of the screen, um, you'll see this, there's a drop down menu um, that appears or disappears based on whether or not I click this, what they call the hamburger drop down menu. Um, and it's got a couple of options, the home page, uh, you know, your overall dashboard, um, the calendar for the IU, any files that I've uploaded that are specific to me, um, you know, that I would be keeping for some reason as part of my learning can go right there. Um, the dashboard looks like my timeline and my courses, um, like as an overview. So here are my courses I'm enrolled in. These are just uh, kind of practicey made up. Actually, you can see that homeroom right there um, on the bottom left um, that I was mentioning that what will be that McGuffey homeroom for students. Um, and you can actually see right here, and this is the course I'm going to take you into, this one that says CSI Student Moodle Orientation Course. Um, it's also over here on the left. So where it says my courses, and then it's kind of uh, indented and you see these different ones. These are all courses that I'm currently enrolled in. Um, and now these, your courses will look different, obviously in terms of names, because mine has to do with the administrator side of things. But, uh, but this course, my, my, what I'm about to show you will look just like what you see when you go in. So this is the student orientation course that every student is assigned when they first start. Uh, and this will be your first assignment, so to speak, um, getting in there and understanding um, how Fusion and uh, Moodle work. Um, and basically, it walks you through it. It's pretty straightforward. You'll see that orientation video that I was talking about. Um, it will ask you to, uh, you'll go through and there will be, some of these videos may or may not apply to you depending on your situation. For example, if you're using one of our jetpacks, you can watch this helpful little video about how to connect to it. Um, and then you'll see as you keep scrolling down the page, there are these different topics that have been set up. The topic one is getting started. You know, here's some basics. Uh, you, you know, we assume you know how to use a computer and a mouse and a keyboard, uh, you know, that you can do basic things like that, that you can get into Chrome or Firefox as your browser. Um, so that's get you started. Then you watch a brief video that says, here's what Moodle is. So here's what it is. Here's kind of an introduction to it, a couple of minutes. Um, then you go down and they've got a, a bit more content about, you know, more about Moodle. You can click on this guide here that gives you more details about documents and tracking progress. If you keep going, um, you can then actually um, practice uploading or submitting different types of assignments. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to do um, a practice quiz, um, you know, in anticipation of a real quiz that I'm going to have coming up, it's got some, my, you know, what would it be my directions up here at the top. Um, and notice that it says, note in your real courses, you may only be given one attempt to take a quiz or a test, so make sure you pay close attention. Um, in this one, it's it's different. You can keep doing it because you're learning. But um, clicking on the quiz example, you can see here are my questions, right? And then I go through and answer each one of them and then submit my, you know, my quiz. So. How many stars on there are there on the American flag? 50 stars. Uh, you know, which of the following is not a professional sports team in Pittsburgh? If you don't know this one, I'm not even sure you should be on this call. Um, so on, right? George Washington was the first president. I'll just click through them um, just to show you what it looks like. So then you finish your attempt, right? It tells you your summary of your attempt, okay, that your answer was saved. Um, and then you can submit it all and finish. Tells you once you submit it, you'll no longer be able to change your answers for the attempt, just like a quiz would. And it'll tell you, you know, what your what your uh, how you did. So look, looks like I got 100%. Thank goodness. Um, then you can always back up. You can actually use your browser buttons to back up. You can also use this um, up here where there's. Uh, you can basically back up back through the pages, or you can go to the left and go back to topic one. Um, and it takes you uh, kind of where you left off on that running um, homepage portion. So, uh, and then there's some other, you know, topic two is how to organize files and folders, et cetera. Um, I want to, I'm going to pause for a second because it is important that everybody hears this part. So, there are going to be some components of these training videos related to like how to save files to your desktop, things like that. Actually, that's what it says right there, how to organize files and folders on your desktop. This, the Fusion program was designed to be um, basically 
laptop friendly rather than Chromebook friendly. And what I mean by that is you're not going to have any issues at doing everything you need to do on a Chromebook. But when they made the videos, some of these are from a couple of years ago when Chromebooks weren't nearly as popular with schools and what a lot of schools had um, were laptops or the IU has laptops that, you can, that the district can actually pay for a student to use and then that's how they would need uh, access to some of these other features. Um, so yours might be slightly different just based on which device you're using, if you're using a McGuffey Chromebook. Um, I know a lot of our students, especially in secondary, are pretty comfortable with things like, I know how to download a file, I know how to find a file when I'm looking for it. Um, but as you're going through these videos, if you're, try if you're using your Chromebook and you're using this video and they're not quite matching each other and you're having a hard time, that's where the help desk comes in. Scroll back up. It's, it's always hanging out over, um, when you go back to, here, I'll just back up a bit. Um, when I go back out to my, uh, my course here, actually, I'm pretty sure if I just click on the logo, it takes me right back. Yep, takes me back to the homepage. And then it's right there always, that Fusion help desk. That's where you can reach out. You're there during the day. You can say, hey, this video is not helping me figure out how to upload this file I did for my assignment. Um, can somebody help me? And they can help you walk through it. Um, and if they can't, uh, you know, then McGuffey can try to help you as well. Sometimes it's just a little hard for us because they know their platform obviously better than we do. But uh, I'll share you with you the correct contact information for McGuffey here in a second. Um, so anyways, if I'm going back to my, my, um, my online training course, uh, oops, not my, not my online training course, that's for, that's for me, not for you. Uh, my student Moodle orientation course is what I meant. Uh, okay, and I'm scrolling back through my topics. Um, it's got all these different things, helpful videos and tips for how to access and do all of these things in Moodle. Uh, some tips here for, you know, schools like, that are Google schools like us. Um, and there's tons of great resources um, for the different programs that they use on here. Um, there's some things about messaging etiquette. So um, like when you're sending a message to your teacher, um, you know, how, how should you address them? Uh, what should that sound like when you're sending an email? Um, you don't want to come across rude or disrespectful. Um, you know, so just some basics on how to, how to talk to your teacher when you need to reach out to them. Um, the magic wand scanner topic six, you can skip past that. Um, we're not using the magic, the, the wands, the scanner wands. So don't worry about that last topic on there. Okay? Um, but some schools use them and so they've got that on there for them. When you go back up here, there was that link to say that, yes, I completed this. It's this button that says click here. So I'm gonna click that and it's gonna bring up this um, Google doc and it says, you know, type your first and last name in the box below. So I'm Setra Cartunian. I am um, from the McGuffey School District, which, since we're a pretty recent addition, I don't see us on his uh, on his Google form yet. So what I would want to do here is I would go to other and I would just type in. Um, I would check yes that I went through my orientation course and then I would click submit. I'm not actually going to click submit, but that's it. It's very simple. Just saying yes, I verified that I completed the orientation course before I started doing anything else. Uh, let's leave that because I'm not going to submit. So that's the basic, um, I mean, without sitting here and watching every one of the videos with you or showing uh, everybody how to upload a file, um, that's the whole point of this orientation course on here is to walk you through all of that. And like I said, we're very happy to help if you have questions along the way, but I suspect that most of our secondary students won't have any trouble navigating this. Um, we have used IU1 um, for some of our other programs for years and our students never really have much trouble. Now that doesn't mean that you may not have a trouble with like, or have, a, have an issue with, you know, your internet connection dropping or something like that. Um, it's bigger than whatever's going on with using Moodle. But I do think it's a very student friendly platform. Uh, I know that some of the teacher content that, you know, we've been able to preview, people create, the, you know, these are, these are teachers, um, even though they are not McGuffey teachers, most of them, um, you know, it's, it's, it might be a middle school teacher in Trinity that's teaching your math class. It might be a high school teacher at uh, West Green that's teaching your math class. They are still middle school or high school teachers um, who are teaching students in school as well as online or whatever their district has been doing. Um, so, you know, these are, these are set up to be classes friendly for students of this age. It's not like some outside person who doesn't know how seventh graders work um, is, you know, is, is 
creating this content. So I find that it's pretty easy for kids to use because it's just similar to, uh, it's made in a friendly way. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna move on with my presentation for now, um, instead of staying in Moodle, because I, I, um, I feel like you'll all be, um, the kids will be pretty comfortable there. But again, reach out if you need some help as you're navigating it all. Um, let me switch back over to my slides. And, um, and then we'll keep working through and I'll uh, follow up on some of the items I, I brushed over a little quickly there. So some important questions out of the gate here. So when does school start for McCyber? So for students in the K-5 to McCyber, school's going to follow the McGuffey School District academic calendar, so August 27th. They'll be logging in for the first time and ready to start their classes. McCyber secondary students are a little different because the IU uses a different calendar because they have all these different school districts that make up the IU. Um, they try to put together a calendar that's uh, that's as you know close to the average, so to speak, of all these different school districts that are participating. Um, if you have any kids that go to a Western area, um, you you might you know they kind of have a similar challenge where they they have to coordinate between all these different districts. So in a lot of their operations, they try to just get somewhere in the middle. The IU is similar. So the start date for students in grades six to twelve is September first. Um, and then I've actually linked here, it's tiny, I made you a tiny URL, tinyurl.com slash IU1 uh, 2021, and I'll just click on it and show you, um, and it'll take you to the document, the PDF that has their, their monthly calendar for the year. And so you can see, you know, um, as you click through um, what it looks like um, when they've got breaks built in and things like that. And like I said, you're going to find that it, it's pretty similar to McGuffey's calendar. There might be a day here or two that's a little bit different. But if you think about that, you're cyber students if you're in this program. So you're working pretty flexibly anyways, uh, where a school calendar isn't, you know, doesn't require you know, being in a physical place the way um, the, the brick and mortar school does. So, um, so note that that's slightly different for the, for the older students because they're following the IU's calendar. It's a, just a few days back. Um, we keep going, and I will put that link on that site as well. Um, how do I receive my login information from Moodle? I know I, I mentioned that a minute ago. Um, you're gonna use that csi.iu1.org site. Um, your login information will be generated um, and sent to you as part of the enrollment process. The enrollment process hasn't actually begun. So I know that a lot of families were like, what's happening? We signed up for cyber. Um, it's like getting, you know, past the middle of August and, and we don't know where we're supposed to, put, you know, should we be doing anything? Um, the answer at the moment, or at least up until tonight was no, not really. Like you didn't really need to do anything with it um, because we can't actually begin opening our enrollment um, until next week. So, and the enrollment process is quick. It's not some big labor, you know, labor intensive thing because you're not changing districts. Like if you were going to an outside cyber school. Um, in our cyber program, you're a McGuffey resident, McGuffey district student. So you don't have to go through any of that kind of paperwork. Um, the enrollment portion related to, uh, to McCyber through Fusion will be handled by your guidance counselors. They said they're gonna be reaching out to you. And um, I'll speak to this a little bit more in a second and I'll show you what their, what their course catalog looks like. Um, but basically I'll, you can begin previewing that tonight once I give you the link and then uh, and thinking about maybe which courses you would wanna take. And then your counselors will um, either email or give you a call. They'll be reaching out uh, in the next few days and kind of rolling into the first part of next week, um, talk to you about your schedule and get you set up for your classes. And then, like I said, during that enrollment process is when we'll generate and send out that information to you about your, uh, your login to Moodle as well. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, McGuffey will use PowerSchool for grades for any courses that McGuffey teaches. Uh, but for the courses taught by non-McGuffey faculty, which is the majority, um, it'll be that program called Jupiter. And again, waiting to find out if Jupiter and PowerSchool can speak to each other, and hopefully it, it can, and you'll just be able to use PowerSchool, but no promises there. But even if you don't, and you have to use Jupiter, don't panic. I've been in Jupiter. It's very straightforward, um, and it, you know it's going to use your same login, and um, it, it's pretty easy to navigate. There is a specific page 
uh, this specific link for logging into Jupiter that ties it to that 61647 number, which is um, you know our, our specific McGuffey site. Um, but don't worry about, you don't have to memorize this link or write it down, same thing. I'll post it on that McDiver page um, whenever, it's, whenever it's live. Um, do I follow a daily schedule for my learning? You know, this has been a question that we've gotten from a lot of families um, as, we, as they've been you know, thinking about the cyber option for their kids. But one of the benefits of it is that um, learning happens asynchronously, meaning it doesn't happen live. And so it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of what your day looks like. Um, I know we've got um, families where a student might need to go stay with an aunt or uncle during the day. Um, and so they're going to really, it's hard for them and they're, you know, it's easier if they can work on their schoolwork at night. Um, some, some people might want to use some time on Saturday. I don't know why, but you might want to use time on Saturday to, uh, to work on your, you know, English assignment. Um, some people, some of our older students might work and want to use the evening as a time to do some of their cyber learning. Um, so that's one of the nice things about it is, no, you don't have to follow a daily schedule, uh, not in the traditional sense. There might be some times when there's going to be like, uh, a teacher might say, hey, we're going to have a live session at one o'clock today, and we'd like everybody to make it if you can. Um, you might see some of that, but that, but generally you're going to be in what's called an asynchronous or non-live environment. Um, now, that doesn't mean that, there, that you'll always just be able to like, I can do my math whenever I want to do it. Um, there will be, you know, as you're, as you're going through your coursework, your teachers are going to be laying some timelines out for you as far as when projects are due and things like that. So it's not just willy nilly, I can you know, say I'm in cyber school and not do math for a week. It doesn't work like that. Um, there are some timelines and some structures provided, but a lot of the daily kind of lesson work and stuff, you have a lot of flexibility as to when you want to use that. I'm gonna throw in this question because I, uh, I, you know, I had some folks asking in the, in the first part of the session here the, uh, with the primary students um, about approximate times that will be required for this. Uh, I imagine that's probably something that, um, you know, depending on your child and their grade level and, um, you know, that individual um, learner, you know, might vary a little bit as far as what you're comfortable with, with them spending time in front of a screen or sitting down learning. Um, I'll, I'll give you what is um, not a great answer, but the best answer I can give you at the moment, which is, um, you know, I do know that, you know, this is their schooling. And um, in the case of the older students, they're taking seven credits of classes through the IU uh, for the middle school and high school students. So their learning load is a bit heavier as it should be uh, than the kids who are in the K to five, you know, the elementary, as far as the time they're gonna spend in lessons and stuff. I cannot give you an exacting answer like this is how many hours a day your child will need to spend, you know, on their online learning. Um, I have heard it generally recommended, you know, or generally stated that typically, you know, the lessons and kind of the, you know, related activities and things can be completed, you know, anywhere in 45 minutes to an hour per subject. Um, so, but again, there's variability in that. Some may only have, that day's lesson might only be 20 minutes. Um, and then you have, you know, and then you use the next amount of time to kind of work on a little bit of homework or a little project related to it. Um, other people, another teacher might say, you're going to spend 20 minutes, uh, but we're just watching a video that I want you to watch on, um, you know, uh, the French Revolution. And then after that, we're going to have a full online discussion forum where I want you to post your thoughts. And that might take a student, you know, up to an hour, depending on how comfortable they are with, you know, typing out their thoughts and how much they have to say about the subject. So there's really, I know it's frustrating because you'd probably love it if I could just say, here's the exact number of hours it's going to take. But I really... There's such a wide variety of courses, and they're taught by you know so many different instructors um, that it's really hard to give you a definitive answer. Um, but I wouldn't say that you need to be thinking about you know your online schooling as well. School is seven hours, so online learning has to be seven hours. Um, that's not the case. We would not expect students to be sitting in front of a screen for seven hours every day. Um, ballpark. If I want to, if I want to try to guess, I'd say think more like four to five uh, per day. There might be a little bit there, like I said, there might be more learning or activities that go on after that. But as far as the amount of time processing lessons, some days may be much less than that. Some days might be a little more than that, but to try to give you a sense of it. I'll actually be curious too, as we go through this, since we're all learning it together, um, 
what your uh, experience is as families um, and in terms of the time that's required and how your child did with the timing. Um, I'd like to know that actually, as, as you're going, as we go through the year together, um, if you're, you know, if you remember to provide me some feedback or if you see me at the, um, at an event and say, hey, uh, I know you asked back in your presentation. Uh, here's how that's going for us. So uh, keep that in mind if you would. Uh, but I am also, I'm going to reach out to our, our contact at the IU and see if they have any advice from other districts that have been using the platform um, in terms of uh, Let me keep going through my slides here. How will I know about McGuffey events and announcements? Um, I, this is what I was talking about earlier, where there's a there's going to be every student's going to be assigned to like a McCyber homeroom class that they'll see in Moodle. That uh, I'll be it'll look like I'm the teacher of it, and the whole purpose of that class is to post assignments. Uh, or I'm sorry, not post assignments, post announcements um, about academic things, um, extracurricular activities that are going on at McGuffey, all of that. Um, and you will, again, you'll, you'll still be connected to McGuffey in terms of, um, you know, you're building principals phone calls, district phone calls, uh, it, you know, building wide emails that might go out. Uh, you're still McGuffey students. And we've really emphasized that with the administration and the counselors, um, you know, that we're not having a group, you know, we're not having McGuffey kids and then these cyber kids. You are our McGuffey students through and through. You're just, you're just getting your learning in a different way. Um, and so, you know, that's been the expectation uh, from the beginning, and they agree with that. So, um, so we're going to dedicate ourselves to making sure that's what happens. Um, I talked about this just a minute ago. Will I be able to learn in live sessions with the McGuffey teacher? At this time, most of the learning will be asynchronous through Moodle and uh, occasionally through Google Classroom, mostly through Moodle. Um, and there, that doesn't mean there won't ever be some live sessions, but uh, for the most part, it's going to be asynchronous. Um, how do I schedule my courses? Again, I spoke about this a few minutes ago, but your counselor that you're assigned to at the middle school or high school, they'll reach out to you in the next few days about uh, reviewing um, your, you know, the course offerings that the IU offers. Um, in many cases, and I put it here on the slide, your equivalent course uh, between McGuffey and Fusion will be an easy switch. Uh, to give you an example, we offer English 8, IU1 offers English 8. We take your McGuffey English 8 schedule, we change it over to McGuffey or to uh, Cyber English. They break it out into English and reading, uh, but it's the same thing. We have double periods where we combine English and reading. They have it English and reading split out into one, one uh, section each. So uh, for those, a lot of those core classes, they'll be, it'll be an easy transfer. For our high school students who are, um, for our high school students who are in AP courses and things like that, um, you know, I mentioned back at the town hall, there are not AP offerings through the IU1 um, at this time. And I don't know if there will be in the future, uh, but I can tell you that as of right now, uh, we're not able to offer AP sessions through, um, through Fusion. They just, they've never been developed um, as, part of the, as part of the consortium. And AP is not as simple as just developing like we can some other courses, um, because there's an outside organization that actually manages all of that. Um, and we have to, we have to um, approach that with their approval, um, which is, you know, they're pretty, um, they have pretty strict, pretty tight restrictions around how they offer their courses. Um, so it's just not that simple to be able to say, oh, we're going to offer AP courses. Um, you know, that's not, a, we're going to keep exploring that possibility, but I, I can tell you that for the upcoming fall and school year, that's not going to be possible. But just be mindful of that. If you're an older student who is planning on taking an AP course or two in the high school, um, if you switch to McCyber, that's not going to be a, a possibility for you right now. Um, and, but then most of the changes that you all will want to make um, will be around electives. And the reason I say you'll want to make changes is um, they offer, the IU1 offers some electives that we offer at McGuffey, but a lot of our McGuffey electives and our IU1 electives um, don't match. So you're going to want to go into that IU course catalog, review some of those electives, and then just be thinking about that for when your counselor reaches out to you for um, enrollment, uh, they're probably gonna ask you, you know, what elective classes are you thinking? Um, I know you picked um, baking for special occasions, but um, since the cyber school doesn't offer that, you know, what's another half credit course that you're, you know, that could, that could replace that. I'm gonna click on this um, really quickly for you just so you can see what it looks like. It's like 60 pages, so we're not gonna sit there and go through it. But I'll at least show it to you. Um, and I made you a tiny URL. Again, I'll post this link for you. 
tinyurl.com slash fusion catalog, um, just to make it a little bit easier to remember. Uh, and what that does is it pulls up a Google Doc. Don't worry, you can't, uh, you only have viewer access, so you're not going to accidentally delete anything. You can download it or print it if you want to. Um, and you can see here they've got their course listings. It's got some, you know, beginning information. Um, and then it pretty much goes right into, you know, starts with language arts, reading six. It's for students in grade six. It's a one credit class. It's taught by Ms. Dillon from California Area School District. Um, and it and this describes what that uh, what that what the course you, know, you can read the course description and see what the what the course is about. Um, so it's broken out by um, departments. So down here at the electives um, is where you'll once you scroll past you know the math and science and social studies and English, um, you'll see some of these elective choices. Things that we don't necessarily offer at McGuffey, for example, uh, swimming. I don't know how you do swimming in cyber school, but they've apparently figured something out. So, um, so you could take, if you're in the high school, you can take a semester of swimming. Um, so there you go. Um, but anyways, you have that link now and I'll post it on the McCyber page on the McGuffey website for you too. Uh, you'll be able to access that from that link as well. What other supplies do we need? Um, so students in grade six to 12, you, you might find that you need some specific supplies related to a particular course that you're gonna be in, um, but your online teacher will communicate that with you if, that's, if there's a need for that. Generally, supplies are not needed as part of being a cyber student, um, but my advice would be you might find some basic stuff like a notebook and some pens and stuff might be helpful for taking notes or completing some of the activities. Again, you might have some teachers who say, I want you to design this project and it would be really helpful if you had these few things. Uh, but in terms of like day one, uh, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna log into your classes on day one and find that you needed markers or anything like that. Um, one thing I will note on here, if uh, the middle school or the high school has a specific need for you to have a, a resource, maybe uh, a book, for example, if you're in a certain class, um, we'll communicate that out to you and set up a plan for you to come get that at the school. Um, so we're working on in the background trying to put together like who are our students that are going into cyber, which classes are they going to be in, and then um, are they part of any other programs where they would need certain resources and things, have a master list so that you hopefully would only have to make one trip up to the school, pick up all your things that you would need, and then, um, you know, and then participate virtually after that. Uh, when will we get a Chromebook and internet device if we need one? Um, Chromebooks and Jetpacks are being distributed next week, so the first couple days, and they're going to be distributed at the buildings, uh, so to the middle school or the high school. Uh, I know Mr. Wilson um, has put out some information about how that's going to happen specifically. I'm going to show you that link really quickly. Um, so if you go to, um, actually, I'll back up for a second. If you go to the McGuffey homepage, you scroll down the district news, it's the second story there right above the link for this training. It says Chromebook Distribution 2021. If you click on this one-to-one -one computing page, Mr. Wilson has put a bunch of information on there about the Chromebooks and how we're doing the distribution and all of that. Um, there's a link here kind of around the middle of the page. It says Chromebook Distribution Process 2021. Um, if you go on there, you can see uh, the details of how he's planning to do that Chromebook pickup. So you can see for the middle school and the high school, August 26th, He's got a morning schedule for the middle school and afternoon schedule for the high school. Um, and it's gonna be over at the cafeteria entrances. So um, again, there's more details on here you're gonna to wanna to read. The other thing I wanna point out to you is he has linked on here, there are paper and well, PDF versions of the different forms that have to be submitted each year if you're getting a district Chromebook. We've also allowed for electronic submission of acknowledgement of these forms this year. So if you click on that link like I just did, under electronic submission, you can see it in the form of a Google Doc. Um, and it's the same content that's on the paper version. You're just affirming uh, electronically that you agree to that. And then, uh, and then if you submit those forms ahead of time, then he can organize and get your Chromebook um, quickly when you come to pick up uh, on that day during that time slot. So again, all that information is found on the homepage. Scroll down to that second news story that says Chromebook Distribution 2021, and you'll see it right here. Um, how does attendance work with McCyber? So this is really important. Students in, in, um, still fall under the state of Pennsylvania's requirements for daily school attendance, okay? 
So that's important to note. Um, the way we're going to do that is you're going to log into the McGuffey Homeroom course each day. And I'll remind you of this too, but um, but you're hearing it you're hearing it now for the first time, and then uh, and then I'll remind it. I'll re I'll keep putting out reminders. You need to log into that. What you'll see is the McGuffey Homeroom course on Moodle each day. That'll be how you'll log your general school attendance. The other thing is, it's, it can't just stop there. There's a part two. Part two is that um, school, some of the school staff, counselors, principals, myself, uh, Ms. Lathie will be monitoring Moodle to make sure that we're seeing evidence that you're actually engaging in the learning. So you can't just go log into the McGuffey homeroom and then walk away from your Chromebook the whole rest of the day. Um, you know, you're gonna need to make sure that we can see evidence that you're completing work. Uh, and Moodle timestamps everything. So we'll know if you're progressing through your activities or not. Now, having said that, it does not, we, because you're in cyber learning and you're not on a daily schedule, you do have some flexibility. So it doesn't mean that if you logged in to account for the day and then um, you needed to take care of something at home, uh, maybe you're watching your little siblings that day or whatever, uh, and you don't get to start your math assignment you were going to work on until 10 o'clock. It doesn't mean that because you weren't on from 8 to 10, uh, you know, Miss Laffey's going to be calling you and you're truant or anything like that. Um, what we're going to be looking for is over the course of the week, over the course of a day or two at a time, are you engaging in your learning activities and at least logging into the homeroom each day? Um, if we see gaps where like, mm, we haven't seen math, any math work done in you know two days now, that's gonna trigger a flag for us um, because we still fall under the state's requirements to account for your attendance at school. And the state has said, you know, you can't just log in and say that's attendance. There's gotta be some evidence of learning there. Uh, actually, the evidence of learning portion is more important um, than, than be, being able to just access the Moodle uh, homeroom course. So just be, uh, just be mindful of that when you're navigating attendance. Yes, you have flexibility as a mixed hybrid student, uh, but you're still supposed to be at school. So um, you know when you've got that kind of flexibility, make sure that you're not abusing that. Obviously, if there's something going on in life or whatever, same as you would in normal, you know, in brick and mortar school, um, let us know. You know, if 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 you're going to be if you're sick that day. Um, you can still be sick, right? Even though it, just because you're sick and you're at home doesn't mean you have to be doing your learning because you're sick. Um, but but after a day or two, there are going to be flags flying if we haven't if we haven't seen evidence that you've been engaging in. Okay. If you have specific questions related to that, as we kind of roll into the year and things come up, um, you can reach out to Miss Laffey. She's the homeschool visitor. Sometimes she's called the attendance officer. Same thing in the in the district. Um, you can reach out to her. Her email address is laffeys at mcguffey.k12. Um, and if you need to get a hold of her, you can also always call, um, you know, either the high school or middle. Actually, you can really call any office. Um, but she's stationed most of the week up at the high school office is where her office is. Um, you can call up there and, and get in touch with her. Um, who do I contact with technical questions or issues um, in relation to Moodle? Um, the, the best place in terms of technical issues, like I mentioned earlier, this is the same thing that's gonna be on the right-hand side of the screen when you're in Moodle, the Fusion Help Desk. They've got an email address, they've got a phone number, they've got a, a live chat. So those are the best ways to get a hold of them to get support on that end. Who can you contact at McGuffey if you need help with technology? So we prefer that you'd start with, um, with the folks at the IU because they, have, they just have more availability than we do to be able to respond to those quickly. Uh, because don't forget, we've also got kids in the building. But if, you, if, you're, if, the issue, if they say this isn't an issue related to us, you're gonna need to contact your district, um, or if you're trying to get a hold of them and it's not working for some reason, um, our first preference would be that you would email the McGee Student Help Desk. Uh, so that's, that's an email address, McGee Student Help Desk at mcguffey.k12.pa.us. That creates a ticketing system for us to make sure that emails aren't getting lost in somebody's inbox um, and that you're um, getting flagged and getting a response that you need to help with technology. If the tech issue is that you can't send an email because you can't get online or something, you can also call the main um, McGuffey School Administration offices, 724-948-3731, and ask to speak to Ms. White 
who's uh, Mr. Wilson's secretary or Wilson himself if he's available, or at least leave a message and somebody can try to get back to you. Um, but but prefer that with tech things, if you can, if you're if it's if you think it's something that the IU can help with, that you start with them. If they if they can't help with it or you can't get a hold of them, um, then contact McGuffey, uh, and we'll certainly do our best to help you. Third part of that: Who can I help if I? Who can I contact if I need help with my schoolwork? So not a technical issue, but like a concept I'm struggling with or something. So note what I put up here at the top of the slide. For coursework, it's usually best to start with your online teacher. And you'll know how to get a hold of them once you're in your courses. Their contact information will be in there. Um, and the reason we say start with them is they're your teacher. So same as you would go ask your teacher in school uh, for help with something, reach out to them. Now, they may not, you know, these, these folks are teachers in other districts. So you may not get an answer right away the second you send the email. When it, with, you know, with a question about an assignment. But if you've sent the email and you're just waiting on them to get back to you, um, give them a little time to get back to you. And, um, and if you haven't heard from them and it's been 24 hours or whatever, and you're really feeling like you can't move on with your English assignment until you get this thing solved, um, at that point, you can then try to get a hold of a counselor or an administrator at McGuffey. Um, and we'll see if we can step in and help, help get you the answer or connect you to your teacher. Um, but so let me let me go through who those folks are real quick. If you're in the middle school and um, and your last name begins with letters A through K, you'll reach out to Mrs. Hughes as your counselor. And if it begins with an L through a Z, you'll reach out to Mrs. Lambie. If you're in the high school, um, same, same alphabet breakout, um, A through K is for Mrs. Macbeth, and then L through Z for Mrs. Ross. So those are your four guidance counselors up at the middle school and the high school. Um, if you need help from an administrator and it's a different kind of situation, um, you can reach out to uh, Mr. Bonus. Uh, Mark Bonus right now is the acting middle school principal and the high school principal. Uh, so he's typically the high school principal, but then he's also acting middle school principal right now. Uh, you can reach out to him. You can reach out to Mr. Welk at the high school. Um, he's the you know, assistant principal at the high school if you haven't met him. And um, we're actually, we posted for what's a, a going to be a Dean of Students job at the middle school. So the Dean of Students is typically somebody who supports the principal and kind of helps with like student issues, uh, things like that. Um, that could also be a contact for you, but that person hasn't been hired by the school board yet. So I couldn't put any contact information on here, um, but, I'll, but you'll, you know, we'll make sure that you have access to that contact information um, once that position is filled. Those are, the, those are my thoughts about who to contact if you need help with schoolwork. Uh, where can we find more training resources for parents and students? Um, like I said, the, the, what you're gonna find the most helpful, I think, right out of the gate is that student orientation course in Moodle. It's automatically gonna be on there for you. You'll work through it, verify, submit the form saying, yes, I completed it, and then you can roll into, you know, into starting your online classes. Um, I put the link on there for that orientation video, but that's also in the orientation course. So it's just a secondary link, um, that one that's tinyurl.com slash fusion orientation. Uh, the IU1 catalog that I clicked out to earlier, it's linked again here. Um, I forgot to note this earlier, so I'm glad I put it on this slide. You're gonna notice that the ag ed classes for the high school, uh, well, sorry, at intro to ag, uh, which we offer in eighth grade and for high school students, um, and then wildlife and conservation, which is only for high school students, um, you, which you had to have taken an intro to take that. Um, those are going to be our two classes that we offer in Ag Ed this year um, through McCyber. And the reason for that is to allow you to still be able to participate in FFA. You are not going to see intro to Ag, nor will you see wildlife in the IU1 catalog. But your counselors will, will be able to sign you up for that class. So if you want intro to ag and you're an eighth grader or ninth grader, um, make sure that you keep that in the back of your mind when your counselor calls or emails you or reaches out about uh, you know, which courses you're interested in, tell them these two that I picked from the Fusion catalog and then I also wanna be an intro to ag and they can get the email. The other thing that's coming out yet, um, it's not quite finalized because it has to be approved is there's gonna be a handbook addendum um, for the student handbooks at each building that specifically addresses some of the things related to McCyber. And the biggest thing that I would just sort of address because I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've been a middle school principal for long enough um, is that um, 
the basic thing you need to know about code of conduct is the McGuffey student code of conduct still applies to you as a McCyber student. Obviously, some of those things might look a little bit different given that you're in an online environment, um, but you can't just be, you know, wild all over the place, loosey goosey in your virtual world uh, and not and not, you know, not be held to an expectation of how we behave when we're at school. So you do have a lot of freedom being in McCyber, but with that comes responsibility. Um, and so just know that the policies of the school district and the handbooks and things like that still apply to you as a McCyber student. Um, you know, in other words, the acceptable use forms, the things that you've promised to do and not do when you're using school technology, when you're on the internet, or you're on, if you're, if you're at the building for some reason, you're using our network um, at some point, you know, all those types of things still apply. So just, just keep that in mind, all right? Uh, and we'll share that addendum with you whenever it's ready. Um, and then this was my last slide that I showed you at the beginning, the, the glossary. So, whew, that was a lot of talking, and I know we're a little past 7.30. Um, but thank you for sticking with me through all of that. I know that's a lot of information. Remember, we're recording this session and we recorded the first session for elementary. So if you need to watch these videos again, they'll be there for you to watch as much as you want. If you can't remember how what I said about something, if you want to see one of those links again. Um, and then the other key thing is I am working on that cyber uh, link from the McGuffey homepage that will have all these links I shared with you tonight. Um, plus all the training information, uh, the links to the videos, and then we'll be getting you your user account information just as soon as we can get all those generated and get those out to you. Whew. All right. <laughs> what questions can I answer for you? All right. Um, Bill Adams, you should be able to unmute your microphone. Hey, Mr. H. Hi, how are you? Good, how about you? I'm good. I just need a drink of water. <laughs> sure. Um, so I had a couple questions uh, after listening to everything. Sure. Uh, so for the kids that are doing cyber, um, are they going to be provided any physical resources? I mean, other we don't need the Chromebook, so we know, we know you're doing that, but like um, agendas uh, where they can keep track of their classes and their assignments and things like that, um, you know, like like they usually get in their school and um, textbooks. Are there going to be textbooks with the classes or are they going to be all online so they're not always staring at a computer screen? Um, you know, and, you know, one last thing, if, if we're talking about four or five hours a day of uh, online learning, um, can they actually take an extra elective or something like that to, I mean, you know, if they're interested, if, it, if they're interested in something like that? Sure, great, great questions. Um, my understanding is that we are still planning to provide um, the usual things that a student would receive, like an agenda. So if kids in the building would be getting that, we would also make that available to our McCyber students. Um, with books, there may, that, um, I, I touched on this briefly earlier, that might just be something that varies, uh, uh, it sounds strange, but even kid to kid, because some students may have specific, um, you know, needs related to, uh, you know, if they're involved in a particular course uh, that requires something hands-on, or if they're, um, you know, part of their learning plan involves uh, something that where they, you know, would maybe need a break from a screen to be able to read a document, something like that. Um, in those cases, we yes, we would provide whatever. If you needed something like that, a book or something, we would set up a system for distributing that, um, so you'd be able to get it. Um, and yes, my um, my understanding is nothing has changed at the building levels in terms of the normal things that you would get from the school. Um, the to the question about the extra elective, we've we've talked about that. Um, well, we actually kind of had the opposite concern, was which is that we didn't want people to, we didn't want there to be overload. Um, in terms of electives and in the high school, start running into all this stuff related to credits and graduation. Uh, the middle school has a little bit more flexibility with that um, in terms of extra electives. So what I would say is once you get that initial kind of course enrollment um, and you see what that looks like, you know, if there's something specific that you're curious about or wanna talk about with another elective, um, if you reach out to your counselor or to me or one of the other administrators, um, we can, we can talk about that one-on-one -on -one and see what might be possible. 
Um, but yeah, we actually at one point had said, what if we made it, you know, what if we let students take one more because they've got a little more flex time than they typically would. Um, but that, you know, like I said, potentially runs into some issues, especially for the, for the high school students um, related to the way they calculate, you know, graduation requirements and things. Um, and the state actually has some, some rules around um, graduation and what, I mean, I'm not as intimately familiar with them as like Mr. Bonus would be, just because I haven't spent much time at the high school level, um, you know, with the academic handbook the way he would have. But, um, but that is a conversation that we could potentially have on a face-to-face -face basis with the family. Um, okay. How's that for a vague answer? It was all right. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Thank you, though. You're welcome. Uh, anything else, or was that, did I hit it? I, I think for now that's it. I'm sure we might come up with some other ones later, but. Sure. Yeah, you know where to find me. Yep. <laughs> um, looks like Ms. Wheeler has her hand up. Um, go ahead. Hello. So Hi with again. the students going to VoTech. Yes. And doing cyber. Yes. Is there How's transportation that? being provided from the high school? Yes, yes. So the way that'll work with them is um, they can, they, they have to get themselves to the school each day, but they can get on the Western Area bus and take it from the high school to Western Area and then back in the afternoon. Um, the only thing we would ask is that when they get back to school in the afternoon, that they you know, would then leave campus and not hang out around school and talk to their buddies um, that they went to, you know, that they haven't seen in a while or whatever. Uh, but yes, they can, they can take the Western Area bus from the high school out to Western Area and then back each day. All right. I had another question, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> That's too much. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me know if you if you think of it. You know, feel free to raise your hand again or send me an email, and or I can give you a call or something. All right. Are there any other questions I can answer or try to answer for you at the moment, folks? All right. Well, we uh, we went a little over my promised end time, but not too bad. Um, if you think of something, use that return to school email address. That's return to school at mcguffey.k12.pa.us. Give us a call. Uh, if we don't answer the call right away, just bear with us. The phones are pretty busy these days. Oh, I see. Uh, I see, Darla Hanford has her hand up. Let me be able to talk here. All right. If you unmic your, uh, un uh, unmute your mic, you should be able to speak. Hello. Hi. Oh. Hi, I just wanted to um, ask about any mixed cyber students that might have IEPs. Um, I know we've been, um, my student has been reached out to as far as one of or two of his classes he won't have co-teachers which we expected but if during any of the mix cyber there's any issues um do we just reach out to the case manager um or at any point during this time if we feel like we want to come off a of mixed cyber and go back, go into the hybrid, what do we have to do in regards to that? Sure. Um, that's a great question. And I, I should have actually just addressed there? it. Yes, yeah, can you hear me? There was a there was a little bit of a delay on your end. So yes. you, might, you might have heard a pause on that seemed like it was coming from my end too. Um, but I'll answer your question. If it's cutting okay. out, or, yeah. If it's cutting out or anything like that, um, you'll, you can watch my my response later on uh, on YouTube too. Uh, Ms. Reichick is actually on the call, so I'm going to answer your question, and then if she wants to add anything, I'll let her raise her hand and, and answer it. Um, yes, great question. So if your child has an IEP, um, you're the Ms. Reichick and the special services team. You know, will be talking to you about what their IEP looks like in relation to online learning um, and you know what those accommodations will look like and things like that. There will be a copy of um, 
of that uh, of those required uh, SDIs and accommodations sent to the teacher that will be their teacher in the cyber program. And again, these teachers fall under all the same uh, legal requirements for privacy and certification and whatnot that McGuffey teachers do. Um, so they'll they will get that information so that they're also then helping to contribute to those. Um, you know, to those, uh, to making sure that that IEP is met faithfully. The question of who to reach out to, um, if you're, you know, having a concern, yes, every child will still have a, an IEP case manager who will kind of be there, the family's like point person, uh, just the same as if you were in school. So they can always be there to support you uh, if you need help with something. And then I just, I mean, I know Ms. Rychek, she'll always be happy to uh, take an email or phone call and help you if she can, or if you call the special services office, uh, Ms. Steele as well. Um, but yes, yeah, still think of that case manager as your point person to be able to get support, or if you have any concerns or anything, uh, that's part of why they're in that role. And then uh, you asked the question about, what if we're getting into McCyber and we're like, ah, this just isn't working for one reason or another. Um, we're really asking families to, I, I'll just say the same thing I said at the town hall meeting in July. I would love it if families could commit to a semester at a time, just because I think it'll make the transitions easier. But we've told families, we will take transitions at the quarter mark. So at the end of term one, um, you know, if, if you need to come out of cyber and into hybrid learning, we can, we can do that. Um, I'm just trying to ma minimize those transitions to disrupt, you know, to, to minimize disruptions back and forth between the two programs. That being said, if things, for whatever reason, if you're in hybrid and you and you're and and things aren't going well for something with your child or in their personal life or whatever, same thing on cyber. If things are just really going poorly, if you reach out to one of us, we'll talk to you about what we can do to help and maybe, you know, maybe consider a transition before that quarter ends. Um, but we know this is a really difficult situation for families. Uh, and it's a difficult situation for the faculty, honestly. Um, it's really, this is a heck of a time to teach um, or try to, you know, trying to teach. Uh, we got McCyber kids, we got remote learning kids, we got hybrid kids. Um, and so trying to be mindful of not creating, uh, you know, so much disruption on their end with people back and forth. Um, we also want families to know that we're flexible, we get it, um, and that you know, it's, it's you're, if you're going into something you've never been in before, um, you might need to want, you know, make a change down the line and just know that we're willing to work with you to, if, we, you know, if that needs to happen. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, Ms. Wheeler, I'm gonna allow you to talk again. It looks like you're... Okay, there you go. I'm hoping you thought of your question. <laughs> I did. I actually thought of two different questions. Okay. Um, one, Jetpack is the um, internet box, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so how do you go about getting one of those? We, if you indicated on that return to school form that you have, um, that you have a cellular signal at your house, we will provide that when you come pick up your district uh, Chromebook. Okay, and what if they didn't? Um, I uh, I would say call uh, call one of your building offices and the secret like maybe give them a call tomorrow or um, and the secretary can can change that information in the system for you. There's yeah there's there's still there's still time to for that changes like that. Okay, and the other question was um, the Chromebook. Harley uh -huh. still has his from last year. Okay, can yeah. he use that or does, should he return it? Does it need quirked or anything? <laughs> no, he should be fine. Um, so we actually had some other families that just said, you know, we were never able to make it to the school. We've still got it. Um, well, I asked Mr. Wilson that question, and he said, if they want to bring it back and get it updated and cleaned up and all that, they can. But it's not necessary. Everything should work just fine um, with it the way it is. If you run into any problems, obviously, you know, you can let us know that as we go. But he does not. You don't have to bring it back. It, it should be just fine the way it is. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and I see Darla's hand is back up. I'm sorry. Are you there? Yes. Don't no. Don't apologize. The only other, as Mrs. Wheeler had said, up in regards to the Chromebooks, which I got 
all the information in the forms. If I'm an essential worker and work in healthcare, so hours are crazy, obviously, through the pandemic. Oh, Miss Hancher, it was it, it was coming we out. We oh. can't get to the school between the hours that um, was on the slide and was on the website. Is the student allowed, or does it have to be a parent to sign for the Chromebook and the Jetpack? Do you know that answer? Should I just call the school? So I, it was cutting out a little bit, but I think your question was basically, if we've got the forms for the Chromebooks, the acceptable use forms, and we can't get to the school during those school hours because of work or whatever, can the student um, basically I sign off? I can call the school tomorrow. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I, I, I thought your question was about, can they pick up the... Um, can, can they drop off the forms and then get the Chromebook if, or does it have to be a parent? Um, if that way, if I understood your question correctly uh, through the through the cutting out, um, I, I actually don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. Um, but I would say absolutely give us a call tomorrow and I can have Mr. Wilson answer that question for you. I'm just not sure um, on his end how he's handling that. But we'll find a way to make it work for you one way or the other. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I hope I, I hope that was the, the question. Yeah, uh, we're having a little I, bit of a connection <laughs> issue, but we're making I thought I got it, but that's it wasn't the a problem, problem where we are, but yeah. It, it, <laughs> thank yeah. you very much for understanding. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, are there any other questions I can answer? Well, we're in our last uh, last group of folks here. We're down to seven. <laughs> All right. Well, if you think of something, like I said, use that return to school email address to uh, to get a hold of us, or feel free to email me. Or if you have a question about special ed, uh, Ms. Rychik, we'd be happy to to help answer your questions as best we can. And just know that we're here to support you along the way, and um, and we're learning together. And uh, thank you all so much for attending tonight and your great questions. I appreciate it. And I'll get all those resources out to you. Too.